anyway. But it was really coming down out there earlier and with moving water on the roadways. Experts say you should reduce your speed by half. Remember that this morning. Globe News HD reporter Ellie Cano is live this morning. She's at Washington Boulevard and Sabine Pass Avenue. Ready to tell us which areas have been hit the hardest by the rain, where we should take those extra precautions. Ellie? Tracy, right now uh, we are on Sabine Pass Avenue and um, off of Washington Boulevard, and you can see I can I'm slashing through some flooding here because this area just minutes ago was completely underwater, and I saw cars getting stuck over here. But our drainage system is working pretty well because within a matter of minutes, this is just leaving. But I was speaking with um, BPD, and they did tell me that over on East Tex, um, the southbound feeder road near near Lucas, that was um, had heavy water over there. But that seems to be going down as well. It's just it's a, still a slick area. Also, um, Park in Washington, that's near here, still a very slick area, as well as um, Interstate 10 and Walden Road. Those are still slick areas that uh, there was a lot of water there before, but again, this water seems to be just going down the drain, but still very slick on the roadways. You know, you can hydroplane just going 30 miles per hour, so remember, in this you know, time, because it was raining all night, we have to be safe on those roadways and go slow when you're out there. We're live in Beaumont, Ellie Cano, 12 News HD. All right, thank you, Ellie, for that live report. You want to stay with 12 News HD and 12newsnow.com for the very latest on those weather changes. And new this morning, an overnight accident in Beaumont injured two people. Police tell 12 News the accident happened on Interstate 10 westbound near the 11th Street exit ramp. Officers say the Ford truck hit a car, then a guardrail caused the truck to flip several times. The driver of the truck and the driver of the car both transported to Christus Hospital St. Elizabeth. The driver of the truck was last reported to be in stable condition. The condition of the second driver is unknown. A passenger in the truck was uninjured. No charges will be filed at this time against a woman who fatally shot her ex-husband in Warren yesterday. Deputies say the ex forced his way into the home off FM 2827 on County Road 1840. Tyler County Sheriff Brian Weatherford says 65-year-old Gary Keith Dean broke into the home using a sledgehammer. Once inside, authorities say Dean shot his ex-wife's boyfriend. Then the woman shot Dean once in the chest and once in the head. The boyfriend is recovering from a gunshot wound to the shoulder. Dean and his ex-wife reportedly live in separate homes on the same property. The deceased was living on the property in a residence approximately uh, 200 to 300 yards behind uh, the initial residence where he and his wife lived before the divorce. The case will be turned over to the district attorney for review. 26-year-old Joseph Garrett Arredondo has been indicted for the shooting death of his mother. Arredondo facing one count of capital murder. Police say he shot his mother, 55-year-old Holly Ann Arredondo, six times at the Hillcrest Apartments in Nederland. And that shooting happened a month ago yesterday on April 9th. Police say Arredondo's mother was actually calling the Spindletop Center seeking mental help for her son just before she was shot. Arredondo remains jailed on a $2 million bond. Well, investigators say they may have a motive now for a Cleveland, Ohio man who held those three women captive inside his home. A letter found in Ariel Castro's home says he is a sex addict. Astro is charged, or Castro, I should say, is charged with rape and kidnapping for three teen girls, Michelle Knight, Amanda Berry, and Gina DeJesus. The girls are at home with their families after being freed from 10 years in captivity at Castro's home. Gina DeJesus and her family are actually sleeping on an inflatable mattress together in the living room. Gina told her mother that she no longer wants to be in a room by herself, but open areas after being confined for so long. She says, Mom, I don't want to stay in a room. So I said, you don't have to anymore. So that's part of the process, part, part of her healing and knowing that she now can do what she wants. Castro is charged with rape and kidnapping. Prosecutors say more charges could be filed, including murder from the pregnancies that he allegedly terminated with his own hands. Castro's bond is set at $8 million. The 20-year-old man accused of going on a stabbing spree on a Texas college campus last month is due in court today. Dylan Quick accused of carrying out the attack at Lone Star Community College in Cypress, Texas. 14 people were injured, and authorities report Quick told them he had fantasized about stabbing people since he 
he was eight years old. Convicted murderer Jody Arias is now on 24-hour suicide watch in a psychiatric ward. Arias was convicted Wednesday for killing her former boyfriend, Travis Alexander, back in 2008. The move comes after Arias told a local Phoenix TV station she would prefer the death penalty. Sentencing has been postponed until May 15th. Britain's Prince Harry continues his seven-day U.S. tour in Washington today, where he will focus on fallen and wounded soldiers. Gentle diplomacy is the goal of the younger prince's visit, and it seems to be working. The prince unexpectedly stopped by the White House for afternoon tea, where he helped children make Mother's Day gifts. Today, he'll lay a wreath at Arlington Cemetery and visit wounded soldiers at Walter Reed. He spent much of his time supporting our wounded warriors and the families of our fallen. This weekend, he's headed to Colorado for the Warrior Games, 200 wounded soldiers in an Olympic-style competition. Next week, he's back on the East Coast touring damage from Superstorm Sandy.